I'm Yusuko, and today we'll be hiking the Kim Nichols Trail. Located in Desert Hot Spring, come and join us. The first part of the trail falls along a dry wash, which is a dry stream full channel full of rocks. The rocks here are both beautiful and tell interesting stories about the land around us. And if you're anything like me, you might spend more time than you anticipated right at this location. Sedimentary rocks tell the history of Earth. Metamorphic rocks with their light and dark wavy bounds give us clues to the great pressure and heat that was needed to create those formations, like the forces that accompany the grinding action of the North American tectonic plate. One of the more interesting rocks I've come across here and a great example of metamorphic forces is garnet. Garnet that is found near the Earth's surface forms when a sedimentary rock with high aluminum content such as shell is subjected to intense heat and pressure producing schist and gneiss, which are plentiful in the dry wash. Once you're able to break free from the lure of all the shiny rocks at the beginning of the trail, you can continue on to find layers of sand and more rocks on the sides of the trail. Typically not enough rain falls in the arid deserts for a continuous stream to flow, so the stream deposits its load of sediments near the mountain front, and flash floods then carve steep sided channels into the ground, and sand laden water polishes its bedrock walls and creates grooves. On the trail, you will see evidence from the February 14, 2019 flash flood, which carved channels and exposed sedimentary layers created from previous deposition of the Little San Bernardino Mountains. Just regular deposition. Regular deposition, flash flood. Flash flood, regular deposition, because here you have all of these gravelly rocks. And then here we have all of the sands, regular sand stuff. So we can tell like that over time, a lot of sand just kind of layered and just rested on this. And then another flash flood came later on and deposited all of these rocks again. Then we had another time where it was just calm, just a whole bunch of sand being blown around, deposited, and then another flash flood. And it kind of keeps going up. You might think of the desert as barren, but the Coachella Valley is particularly rich in lizards, with 33 different species found within a 50 kilometer radius, the most of anywhere in the United States. Many of these species have developed specialized adaptations to survive in the desert and are endemic or found nowhere else on Earth, like the Coachella Valley fringe toed lizard. As their name implies, a unique feature of the lizard are the fringes on the edges of their toes. These fringes give them the unique ability to walk quickly over hot sands without sinking. Thinking. Other adaptations include a wedge-shaped nose which enables it to burrow through the loose sand with specialized nostrils that allow it to breathe without inhaling sand particles. point of the trail, you can enjoy 360 degree views of the desert, the Little San Bernardino Mountains, Mount San Gorgonio, Mount San Jacinto, and here you can even visualize how sand flows through the desert. From the peaks of the mountains through alluvial fans and along the windy pass to the dunes where fringe toed lizards roam, everything is connected. How did the sand get here? Sand movement in our desert is carried in a northwest to southeast direction. The desert rain shadow effect from Mount San Jacinto contributes to strong winds in the Coachella Valley as hot air rises, pushing sand and dust away from the alluvial fans at the base of the mountains. It will get carried away and the remaining well-sorted sand accumulates in dunes. Sand dunes used to dominate the Coachella Valley once covering 100 square foot miles from the San Bernardino Pass to Indio. Today, 95% of sand dunes are gone and the Kim Nickel Trail is the last place you can view the Coachella Valley fringe toe lizard without restrictive access. A very unique and exciting experience. When you're done admiring the view, look down at your feet for one more geological feature. Over long periods of time, wind abrasions create smooth surfaces or facets on pebbles, cobbles, and boulders. If a rock rolls or tips relative to the prevailing wind direction, after it has been faceted on one side, or if the wind shifts directions, a new facet with a different orientation forms, and the two facets join at a sharp edge. 
Rocks whose surface has been faceted by the wind are called ventifacts, and there are many of them here along the trail. Thanks for joining us on this awesome trail. A great goal is to at least make it to the high point so you get a chance to view the desert in all of this 360 degree views, maybe spot the endangered lizard and visualize how sand travels through the valley and even perhaps see sand in a different way. Thanks for joining us today and I hope you have a wonderful day.